Hey guys. Okay, so we are packing for Europe. excited. I have been waiting for this day for years, years to take all of my boys to Europe. I've been a few times, but Bo and the boys have not been to that side of the world yet. So I am pumped. We leave in two days, but we're going through a, a group that I found via the homeschool community. And it just got me thinking that I wanted to share with you guys some trips and educational things that we've done over the years and how you can kind of think outside of the box because I would not have found this opportunity had it not been for the homeschool community online. And um, there's just so many resources out there for you. So anyways, I'm gonna show you a little bit about like, our packing and stuff, but I just thought it would be a great idea for a video in case you just feel like you guys do the same things over and over as far as like field trips and things like that, just to kind of get outside of the box. And maybe this will spark some ideas for some events and trips that you could maybe plan yourself. So yeah, let's chat. Also take a look at <laughs> my bed right now. Oh my gosh. So here's the deal. We are each taking one carry-on for 10 days and four countries. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm typically a pretty light packer on my own desire, but like when I know I have to and I'm told to do it, it's another, it's another story. So I'm like trying to figure out all of the, all of the pairings that I can put together and things that I can wear more than once. I was hoping that we would be able to do laundry on this trip and and when i asked they said probably unlikely that we'll have a laundry service so yeah so anyways we're all trying to figure out like how to reuse outfits more than once assuming that we'll be decently clean <laughs> i am thinking i want to say i've heard of like a, a laundry detergent sheet or something like travel sheets that you can take and like wash your clothes in the sink of your hotel or something like that. I need to look into that. That might be a good idea. But anyways, yeah, my bed's a mess. I'm just like trying to figure out how to pack and everything right now. This is the situation. Lots of neutrals going on. And these slacks are so comfortable, like more so than my denim jeans, which I love denim. So anyways, I think I'm gonna just wear these slacks a few times and I'm just wearing tennis shoes. So I'm just pairing you know, all the neutrals with it. And I think I might bring this little fun fake leather squirt I've got going on here. Oh, and we go to Paris. So I was thinking these would be fun to wear with tinnies and maybe this um, graphic tee, I don't know. But, oh, and tucked away over here is my scarf that I made for the trip. So I gotta cut, I gotta cut the strands that I wove in, but anyways. Super excited. Okay, so like I said, this is incredibly impromptu. I don't know if I said that, but I'm saying it now. So impromptu of a video and I have no script. I'm really just going off of memory here. So prayers that I remember things to tell you. <laughs> Let me prop you up so I can stop moving around. Okay, see if that'll work. So racking my brain as far as like trips and things that we've done in the past. So. Before we moved to Texas, we did a co-op in Louisiana, like maybe two, three years out of the seven and a half years that we homeschooled there. And one co-op, which was part of our church, we loved. Unfortunately, it didn't have enough participants to continue going. So that only lasted one year for us, but the other ones we weren't crazy about. However, there was typically an option for us to pay a fee and be able to participate in like field trips and events that they did and not have to participate in the actual co-op itself as far as like the classes and such. So oftentimes I would do that. And even one of my best friends that lives in Ruston, oh, there's a gnat, like go away gnat. If you see something grow across the lens, that's what that is. So anyways, one of my friends in Ruston, which is about a 45-ish minute drive from where we lived, had a fantastic co-op and I was jealous for so many years because 
their town was significantly smaller than ours. And I was always like, I don't understand why you guys have a fantastic co-op and we have like hardly any options here. A couple of years when the boys were a little bit older, we did their co-op for the events and they had like homecoming dances. I don't think that they called it a homecoming dance. It was like a fall dance or something. I can't remember, but they did really great events. And so we paid a fee to be a part of their co-op in order to participate in their events. And that was fantastic. So all that to say that if, if you are in a co-op or maybe there's a co-op by you, but you're just, you don't want to be a part of the classes, but they have events, ask if there is a fee that you could pay and be able to participate in any events that they have coming up. Because we did that several times with the different co-ops, um, sometimes two to three co-ops in a year, just to be able to do so many different ev events. And it was great. And even think outside of the box, like, because like I said, I mean, we were a part of a co-op that wasn't even in our city. So if you're, you know, an hour or two drive time away from maybe a larger city, yes, it's, it's a significant drive time, but if you're only going to, a handful or less events, it might be worth the drive and worth the opportunity to join a co-op that's not in your town, just to be able to take some really great field trips um, and have some additional education experiences for your kids. Okay, something else that we did for the first time two years ago, what year was that? I think it was 2021, so a year and a half-ish, is I started following traveling homeschoolers on Instagram. Or Facebook I can't remember a social media platform or maybe I found her website regardless traveling homeschoolers <laughs> I will link it down below and she put together a universal trip to Orlando for a fantastic price the first time we went all four of us went so me my husband and our two boys we went and we stayed in an Airbnb, which was great. But this last time we went just this past winter and we ended up, or was it the fall? Yeah. And we ended up utilizing the hotel that that she had a group rate for and you cannot beat it. So for a family of four, we had a family suite at, I can't remember what the name of the hotel was. It was like, um, like a fifties vibe to it. Darn it. I'll have to figure it out. Maybe I'll link it down below. It won't matter. But anyways, because you wouldn't be able to get the group right. It was a great hotel. And, um, for four, for a family suite, I think we paid like two fifteen a night or something like that. It was crazy, which included a shuttle to Universal Studios. And that was amazing because the year before when we went, we had an, we stayed in an Airbnb and we rented a car. So it was a lot more expense on that trip versus staying at the hotel and having the shuttle. It was well worth doing that instead. It was so much easier. So yeah, the rates for the tickets. So we did five day tickets. You, she also offered a three day ticket. In our opinion, the five day ticket was the way to go price wise. It was like less than a $50 difference. And even if we didn't use all five days, we thought it was worth the investment in the five day, which we did both times end up using going all five days. My sister in love is a Disney and just travel planner. And when I told her the rates that we got for the universal tickets and our hotel, she was like, Mo, I can't touch that price. Like, I don't even know how she gets it at a discounted rate like that. So, I mean, that made me feel pretty good about the deal. And we love Orlando. We love Harry Potter World. We love, if you have not ridden Velocicoaster, you guys, you need to go just for that. I'm telling you, it's my happy place. Veloci I could ride Velocicoaster over and over and over again, which I actually, in fact, did do. <laughs> it's my favorite. And the front seat is the only way to ride that ride. Okay, moving on. So like I said, she also, traveling homeschoolers, she also does a Disney rate, which from my understanding is fantastic as well. We did Disney one day, not through her. We just decided um, the first time we went to Orlando in 2021, we were like, hey, let's surprise the boys and do a day at Disney to do um, Star Wars. We quickly found out that we were not huge Disney fans, <laughs> um, which, you know, whatever floats your boat. For us, we love thrill rides. We love the rides at Universal. And so 
we appreciated that we were able to experience, um, I don't even remember which Disney park that that one is called, Hollywood Studios, I think. But yeah, we enjoyed it while we were there. It just wasn't for us. <laughs> so I'm glad we only did one day. But if Disney is your thing, Traveling Homeschoolers has amazing deals for Disney. I do know that they sell out pretty quickly. So get like, be on the lookout for when her upcoming trips are and snag up some tickets whenever you can. I'm pretty sure that she does two a year for Disney and Universal Studios, one in the spring and one in the fall. And we typically go in the, go in the fall and the weather has been fantastic. Like th the one catch is that you have a specific amount of time to use your tickets. So, and it usually falls just after Thanksgiving, which we have found has been a great time to go um, as far as crowds and such. But as I was saying, you do have, I can't remember the amount of time, if it's two weeks or maybe a little bit less, like 10 days that you have to use your tickets. You have to have a little bit of flexibility as far as that goes, which for most homeschoolers, you have that flexibility, right? And so it, it has always worked out wonderfully for us. She does also offer other trips. Um, I wanna say I've seen like an Atlanta, thing, a, a Washington DC. And I think she has started to do international trips as well. So like I said, I'll, I'll link her website down below. Check it out. I'm not affiliated with it. I've just, I've had such fantastic experiences purchasing tickets and trips through her that it's just, I'm more than happy to share that source with you. Another tip, and honestly, I don't even know that it's a tip because I feel like it's, kind of common sense and maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just a good reminder <laughs> would be a better term to use. But Facebook groups, you guys, like join homeschool Facebook groups because there are so many people that think outside the box there or share their vacations, um, vacation planners that they've used, like all the things, utilize that for you and your family. Uh, you can get good deals there, you can get good ideas there, like utilize social media to benefit you. And if you haven't used Facebook groups, definitely check that out. Also, Google is your best friend. <laughs> Google educational events near me, free educational events, contact your state's tourist guide uh, agency. Um, oftentimes they'll mail you for free pamphlets and things, um, museums, just, you know, things that maybe you're not even aware of. Search your little heart out. And what I started to do was just make a, a Pinterest board of all my ideas and, and things because I cannot remember. If it's not on a sticky note, I will not remember it. So Pinterest is a one of my best friends as far as a digital memory board. But yeah, just Google search your little heart out of whatever type of trip or educational experience that you're looking for. And I bet you'll come across some pretty great ideas. Also, there were a few times where even some of the, the co-ops that we were part of, they didn't do certain things that I remember doing in when I was in school that I wanted the boys to experience. So one of them was like visiting our local fire department. And so myself and a few of our other homeschool friends at the time, uh, one of us just called the fire department and asked if we could schedule a tour. They were more than happy to do it. And it was actually even better, I think, than being in a really big group because the kids had more time to like put on the fire suits and put on the hats and check out the trucks and all the things like that. And so it was a really cool, like intimate experience. There was another time we had, I forget what it was called. It was like Safety Town or something. It's like this whole little town for little people is what they called it, where you could drive cars and you, the kids learned safety. Um, it was like safety awareness and just super, super cool. So was, again, myself and some friends of ours just got our kids together, called, set up a tour appointment and 
just did it for our, a little group. And like I said, a lot of times those small intimate groups were even better than being in a really big group because you got to have more time there. You got to sometimes do a little bit more than what the big groups got to do. So if you have some friends, maybe just get together and share some thoughts and just make some phone calls. And oftentimes you can just do that for free. They won't even charge you or, or whatever the case is. Uh, maybe a police department. I mean, just, you know, the sky is really the limit. So don't be afraid to make the phone call. Okay, that's really all I can think of right now. I am sure we did many other things, but I'm also in the middle of packing <laughs> for Europe. Ah! And I'm so excited, I'm so excited. So I can't think of anything else. If I do, I'll mention it in an upcoming video, but I just thought it was a, a good, quick idea to share some of my thoughts with you on that. And you guys, education and field trips can be as small and as free um, as going to your local fire department or as big as planning a trip to Europe. You know, I mean, they're so just domestically, like even just to drive somewhere, there's so many, so many amazing historical things that you can see within the United States, you know? There's so many fantastic and historical things that you can see close to you, or if you're willing to drive a few hours, you know? I mean, depending on what your budget is, just don't limit yourself. Make phone calls, do some research, see what the options are out there, um, and just try to get outside of the box. And honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, like. We've never actually done this, but I think it would be pretty cool. Like just drive, like maybe have an end destination, like a state or two away, depending on what state you're in. Lord, if you're in Texas, like I am, a state away is a hot minute drive. <laughs> but maybe without any agenda and you just stop, you know, you just make stops where you see things. You just search along the way and find historical stops and museums. And that would be kind of cool. Like. I don't know, I just had that thought. So there you go, there's another idea right there. But anyways, again, just wanted to share a few things. If you have, I know, I know so many of you are gonna have fantastic ideas. So let's like come together, share your thoughts, share your ideas in the comments. And I bet that we can pull together and come up with a pretty solid list of ideas as far as field trips and educational experiences go. Okay, you guys are fantastic. I hope that this was helpful in some capacity, <laughs> but I will be sharing on our trip. I'm super stoked about that. Um, but until next time, you guys, I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.